Hello everyone, I'm Tarika from the Diversity API Manager team. Today we are going to talk about how you can work with APIs using WS2 API Manager. You will understand what features are available in WS2 API Manager that helps you to do API design and development. The API Publisher component of WS2 API Manager is a feature-rich UI-based tool for API design, development and management. Simply put, this is where you can create and manage your API proxies. Let me give you an idea about the overview of the main function that the API Publisher is used for. Then we can talk about other enhanced features around it. Your actual backend API will have a certain contract that the users outside can consume. For example, your actual API will have a resource called slash employees that can be used to retrieve the list of employees working for your organization. It can accept an optional query parameter called department so that you can filter out the employees based on that. Then you will have another resource called slash employees slash employee ID where you can retrieve the information of a specific employee given the employee ID. So your API contract says that you have these resources in your API that others can make use of. This is the interface to your API. In API Publisher, the first thing you do is to design this interface. Once that is done, you need to specify the actual backend endpoint for this API. Then WS2 API Manager as the middleman can direct the requests coming to your API proxy to the actual backend. Given that this is the basic functionality that we can build upon, let's dive into the enhanced features you can expect from WS2 API Manager's publisher component as a complete API management platform. Rate limiting policies. As the name suggests, rate limiting policies are used to balance the load of your system. It restricts the number of requests that can consume your API within a given time period. These policies can also be used to monetize your APIs and bring revenue to your organization, meaning the consumers who need a higher quota can be charged more than those who are subscribed to a lower quota. So through the API Publisher portal, you can assign these rate limiting policies to a particular API, which would determine how the API behaves when it is exposed to the world outside. API Policies API policies generally enforce some business logic that needs to be executed on the request, response or fault flow when an API is invoked. So if you want to incorporate a behavioral modification of the request before sending it to the backend or a modification of the response before it is sent back to the client or a modification when a fault occurs, you can add API policies to an API from the API publisher portal to cater that requirement. For example, assume that you need to transform your request payload from JSON to XML before sending it to your backend because your backend API accepts XML payloads only. You can simply attach a policy in the request flow so every time your API is invoked through WST API Manager, the request payload will get converted to XML. API Lifecycle An API lifecycle represents stages that an API could go through from its creation to retirement. This is very important in the aspects of managing your APIs so that you would have a well-organized and a smooth running system. WSG API Manager has a set of predefined lifecycle states, namely created, pre-released, published, blocked, deprecated, and retired. You can even add your own lifecycle state through the extension points we have. The created state is where the API has been created, but it is not available for usage. External users are not able to see these APIs. The pre-released state is where your API is not yet released, but is available to the external users or consumers to test. This gives an early implementation of the API. The published state is where your API is published to the external users and is ready to be subscribed to and consumed. Then the blocked state is where access to the API is temporarily blocked. Runtime calls will be blocked and the API will not be visible to the external users. For example, if you detect a misbehavior in your API, you might need to temporarily block it until it is fixed. When an API is in the deprecated state, new subscriptions are disabled. However, the API is still available at runtime to existing subscribers or consumers. 
existing subscribers can continue to use it as usual until the API is retired. And finally, the retired state is where an API will no longer be available for use. API versions and revisions. There are two concepts called API versions and API revisions in WH API Manager. It is important to distinguish between the two. So let's try to understand what they are. What is an API version? It is a copy of an existing API, but with possibly breaking changes. What do you mean by a breaking change? If there is a breaking change in an API, the already existing applications that use this API will not be able to use it like they did before. So they will have no choice but to change their application code to suit the API change. For example, if the response structure of the slash employees resource of the API has changed, the applications that process the response from this API resource will have to change the processing logic to suit the new structure. Otherwise, the applications might break. So that is a breaking change. Also, an API version is maintained as a separate API. It will not have a connection with the API which the copy is made from. The main difference here is that API consumers can decide on when to use and adopt new API versions. What is an API revision? It is a copy of an existing API but with minor changes for improved functionalities and better user experience. This will not be breaking changes. An API revision is maintained within the same API and they are read only. That means an API revision cannot be changed after creation. You can simply cut a snapshot of the existing API and deploy it in the runtime. Or you can cut a snapshot from the API and keep it so that the existing API can be restored later when required or if anything goes wrong. Here, API providers or simply put, the creators are the ones who will decide when to deploy the revisions in the runtime and make it available to the consumers. The consumers will not notice a difference as this will not be a breaking change. The API Publisher portal allows you to easily configure all these functionalities. Testing and Prototyping It is important that you test your API before exposing it to the external users or the consumers. The API Publisher portal of WS API Manager provides you with a test console so that you can try it out yourself. By this, you can make sure that the API meets the required functionalities and behavior before publishing. And when we discussed about API life cycles before, we talked about a state called pre-released. This is the state where your API is not yet released, but is available to the external users or consumers to test. This is a prototype implementation of your actual API. Allowing consumers to test your API this way can help you do the required enhancements to your final API and release a better quality product. Inbuilt user roles. In WS API Manager, we have several predefined inbuilt user roles that come out of the box with required permissions. Let's talk about the three main user roles required by the users getting involved in the main functions of WS API Manager. Note that this is apart from the default admin role. You can of course create custom user roles instead, but with the required permissions. Internal creator role is usually assigned to a person in a technical position who understands the technical aspects of the API, such as interfaces, documentation, versions, etc. The creator cannot manage the API lifecycle, but has permission to govern, manage, and configure the API artifacts. Internal publisher role is usually given to a person in a managerial role and overlooks a set of APIs across the enterprise and controls the API lifecycle, subscriptions and monetization aspects. So these two are the two main roles that API providers can have. Internal subscriber role is assigned to API consumers who search the developer portal to discover APIs and use them. They read the documentation, rate or comment on the APIs, subscribe to APIs, obtain access tokens and invoke the APIs. So with this, you are able to assign proper roles to the required users and utilize the principle of least privilege when working with APIs. Access control and visibility. 
One way of controlling access to your APIs is through Auth2 scopes. These scopes enable fine-grained access control based on user roles. You can assign scopes to the resources of an API. When a user invokes the API, the access token they use cannot grant access to any API resource beyond its associated scope. For example, there can be requirements such as restricting the access to a given API resource to admin users only, while for other resources of the same API, access should be allowed to consumers with less privileges. Apart from O2 scopes, there can be scenarios where you want to hide APIs from certain users or user roles, both for API providers as well as API consumers, depending on their privileges. Using API Publisher Portal, you can easily add these visibility controls to your APIs. So this concludes our session where we looked at how to work with APIs in WSJPI Manager. Thank you.